So if you come to Ecuador and you want to build or buy a piece of property and build a house, it's you know you know how I feel about that, folks. I've talked to Pete. I've said many times, don't come here and buy a piece of property. I probably should clarify that a little bit. I don't mean like don't absolutely never come here and buy a piece of property. You do what you want to do. I and you know how I feel about giving advice. You come here. Stay here for a while, six months, maybe a year, and then you can start looking around. Make sure you know you want to live here because if you build a house here, it's a lifetime investment. You may or you may not ever sell it if you decide you want to leave, so just be warned, okay? It's not like it is in the United States. There's not a lot of supply and demand, okay? And it's simple supply and demand economics when it comes to buying and selling houses here. So I interviewed this guy yesterday. His name is Francisco Zaretta. He's a architect. He's an attorney. First and foremost, he's an attorney, and he knows the home building business, okay? He's an architect. He's a designer. He's, he knows all the ins and outs of building a property, getting the property inspected, and making sure that you don't have any unforeseen surprises later on. So I had a chance to sit down and talk, chat with him yesterday, uh, we all know about Sue and Pill Jordan. I uh, did an interview with them a few months ago about their house that they built in Monte Cristi on the golf course. This is the guy that helped them, and I want you to I want you to meet him. And as soon as we come back, here's the interview. Hey. Oh, rocket chick. Hello there. All right, so here we are. <laughs> now we got all this going in. Let me get this rice off the table here. All right. Uh, you are Francisco. What's yes. your last name? I'm Francisco Surita. How do you spell that, please? S U R I T A. S U R S U R Z. Z. U R I T A. Yeah, Z U R I T A. Surita. Rita. Yeah, Rita. yeah. Beautiful name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, where are you from? I'm from Ecuador. I'm from Quito. Oh. Yeah. All your life? You've been here all, all life. your life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I lived two years at the States. Yeah. In Washington, D.C. when I was 17 and 18. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now you live here in Monta? No, right or, now, or right now, I'm living in uh, Calgary, Canada. Before that, we lived here in Manta for around five years. Yeah. Wow. So, why Canada? I, I don't... Canada because I had to support my wife. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the main reason why we moved. Because yeah. she wanted to, uh, to study again. She did her master's degree yeah. in uh, media communications in Calgary. Right. So that's the reason why we moved. Yeah. So what do you do for a living? Over there I work in... Uh, in a construction company, mm -hmm. it's many roles. Mm -hmm. Started from a sales manager, so and then I moved to supervising different type of crews during construction: framing, window installation, um, insulation, drywall. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to to get more experience in how North Americans build, and I can have a better idea how to put that in place in my building company here in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing in Ecuador? Well, in Ecuador, I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I have my firm in Quito. It's called MG Asociados. My partner is the lawyer Patricia Montoya. Okay. But uh, also I own a construction company here in uh, Manta. Okay. And you build houses. I build houses. Let's just cut to the chase. You build yeah. houses. I build yeah. houses. Yeah. And uh, most of my clients are yeah. expats from most, Canada yeah. and from the United States. Yeah, we all know Sue and Pill Jordan. I did a video on them about their house. You had a lot to do with that. Everything. Right? <laughs> everything. Yeah, had everything to do with it. Yeah. I remember them talking about you, and they, they were really excited about the fact that they had somebody that they could go to. 
for everything. So, All the time. So, yeah. in a kind of in a nutshell, explain to me what your responsibility. If if I want to build a house, okay, here in Ecuador, out there on the golf course, and I come to you and I say, I say I want to build a house. I have no idea what to do. Well, my first question would be, do you own the lot? Okay. Right. Let's, let's because I can help you with that as well. Okay. Negotiation of the lot and. Uh, and all the process, because as I told you, I'm a lawyer, so I'm, I know exactly what you need, the steps mm -hmm. that you need to follow to own your land here in Ecuador. But let's say that you already own the land. So the first thing that I would do is make an inspection of the lot. Uh, the first question that the client will, will ask is, what will be the price per square meter? My answer will be, I have no idea. I have to check the lot. I have to see have some slope. I have to see and check what kind of dirt we are talking about, the location, mm -hmm. different, different information that we need to provide an answer. So, yeah, that, that would be the first step, to, to find out where is the lot and what we need to do to start construction. And, and then plus, th there are things that you know about that lot just by doing your inspection. There are things that you know that the average, that I know I wouldn't know, the homeowner wouldn't know. You know what to look for, right? Exactly. And because we all know, we've all heard the horror stories about people building property here and then finding out after the house is built, oh, we shouldn't have done it there. I know somebody that's got a million dollar home out here that they sent me video of water flowing on the floor through this place and they didn't even realize that they were in this floodplain. And this is something that you probably could have helped with, right? Yes, so... Had, had you been involved? The, 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 one of the first steps that as our company do is uh, provide a design agreement to the client. Once, mm -hmm. we, once we visit the, the, the law, then we tell them, oh, okay, this is the idea that we have. We provide them a design agreement. In the design agreement, we start with the surveyor to know where the lot is exactly. We don't want to build in a different lot, mm -hmm. right? In the neighborhood. Right. Uh, then we go with soil study. Soil study is so important here in, in, in Manabi, in Manta, because we need to know what, it, what we have underground right. and, and, and do the proper their movement to avoid the house to settle and cracks and all the kind of problems that there's a lot of houses having those problems here. So during that phase, our architect that speaks English work directly with the client and uh, as many times as they need to finalize the four plans based on, on their needs and based on their wants. Then with that information we send to the structural engineer. In the case of the traditional uh, construction system, there's no need for the architect and the structural to know about the system because everybody knows traditional system. But in the Hormi 2 system, the architect and the structural engineer have to work together mm -hmm. because in that system, some walls act as columns, supporting walls. And that's something that we explain the options that we build with yeah. the clients. So for the benefit of the viewer, you're, you're calling that the system, spell that out for me, please. It's H-O-R-M-I-2. Okay, I'll, be sure I'll put that right up here in the video. Yeah. So, and, and Hormi two, Hormi the, the, two, the system yeah. the system is not is not Hormi two. The the the, the system is uh, foam panels. The okay. brand is Hormi two. Okay, the brand is okay. The, the brand, the best brand in Ecuador to work with is Hormi two. You are going to find many other panels uh, on the market. Yeah. But we don't work with those panels. We just work with Hormi two because it, they have been here in Ecuador for almost twenty years and they built a lot, a lot in the highlands, in Guayaquil. Okay. So we have warranty of the product that we use. Okay, so describe that wall, if you will. Describe uh, how it's made. Okay, it's a foam in the middle, foam. mash in one side, mash in the other side. Okay. okay. That's the panel. Panels are put together and we have the walls. Okay. And then we cut the, the panels where the windows are going to be placed or walls that you need or the client needs are going to be placed. When the panels are on place, we run electrical, right? 
Okay. And then we spray the mixture mm -hmm. that is almost almost. Um, And uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's it's like a concrete mixture, or okay, or no, it's, like it's a, concrete, it's like it's, plaster. It's concrete. It's sand from the mm -hmm. river, not mm -hmm. from the ocean, not from the, not river, from yeah. the ocean. It has to be yeah. from the river, yeah. and uh, from some kind of fiber that we put okay. to to keep all together. Okay, so, we so this is what gets sprayed on on top of the mesh. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so. The panel at the end, it works like weather barrier, it sound barrier. Uh, it has so much insulation that even if it's so hot outside, you will, you, you will have a nice temperature inside mm -hmm. because of the panels, right? The foam, foam is a good insulating property. And we use yeah. that on the roof as well, mm -hmm. so the whole house is insulated. So when they when they build the house, did they, they bring these panels out? I remember seeing pictures from uh, Sue and Phil's, and they had these panels laying on the ground, and then they like they literally cut the door out, and or cut the windows out right on site, right? Yeah, that's the way it's done, right? The, the panels are on the ground, and then we assemble the panels on okay. the on the house. Okay. And when the panels is, is already assembled with the architectural design, with the blueprints, we cut the, the, the windows and the doors. Okay. It's uh, when the panels are already installed. Okay. All right. And they said something about this being earthquake. Oh, it's really good. It's yeah. really good because the, the walls act as columns. Okay. They are supporting walls. So the whole house moves in the same direction. Yeah. And that's yeah. Uh, a really good system against earthquakes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some other stuff here, okay? Sure. Uh, not so much about construction, but everybody knows. I, I, I'm trying to, I want to be as delicate about this as possible, but there's, there are problems that people have had that they've reported with getting a house built, you know, buying property and getting a house built, getting permits, all this kind of stuff. This is where you come in, where you can help smooth out those rough bumps, you know. You know what I'm talking about? It's is this something, can you help me with that? I don't want to deal with all this paperwork and all the legality. I don't know how to deal with the local permit office. Is this something that you can do when, as part of your service? When people contact us, they are moving to a different country, yes. different language. Yeah. They don't know anything about it the country. I'm from here. I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I work in real estate. I will, I build houses. Mm -hmm. I know I know how it works. So I provide help, assistance since the first time, since the beginning, since they want to purchase a lot, till I deliver the key in their hands. Mm -hmm. I go through the whole process. I'm the project manager of the company. Okay. I, uh, I think that I speak with English. I understand English, I understand my people, and I know how to move here in Ecuador. I have connections. Uh, it's my country. Yeah. So I can help every expat when, when they have the idea to make the, their dream come true, mm -hmm. right? Our goal since the beginning is to give that person peace of mind. Okay. During the purchase of the lot, it won't you won't have any problems in the future. Like, hey, uh, my, my brother sold that lot and I didn't want to sell that lot and half of that lot is mine, right? Or uh, taxes, it, that lot haven't paid taxes for 10 years. Mm -hmm. All that kind of problems uh, we take care of. Right. We take care of the permits. The client, they just have to agree with us and then we provide all the paperwork. They just have to sign the papers that are, are needed to get the permits from the municipality and we deliver the permits like okay. in one month or two months depends on depending in depending each project mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, we delivered all the information and all the approvals so in the states we expats when we're we're used to a certain process when we buy a piece of property 
you know, we, we the property gets inspected, the property has to make, that somebody does a title search to make sure that there's no existing titles on the property or, or no liens on the property. Do you do that here? Is, is that done? Do you do a title search? when If I want to go buy a piece of property a lot in Monte Cristi, and I call you up and I hire you, and I say, I want to buy this lot, make sure it's 100% legal and nobody else owns it. Is that ever a problem here? Not in Monte Cristi, because Monte Cristi, you know, is a, a serious business. But you can have problems in resales, mm -hmm. right? Or any other part of Manabi. Manta, if you are yeah. not in a gated community, if you go and you want to purchase a property in town, you have to make the proper research. And then something that we we are experts in, in that, okay. right? right. Uh, we have an office in Quito. Even though that I'm in Canada, I still have the office in Quito, and mm -hmm. my partner takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. How often do you come here? Uh, well, I'm uh, my project is to be here in Ecuador at least twice okay. a year. All right. Yeah. So now that I've found the lot and I've hired you and I'm ready to build the house, what if I want to get financing? Oh, that's that's something that we not provide. Okay. No, no, no. Right. We don't, you don't we, get involved. No, in no, that. no, we don't get involved. I don't in blame that. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we we don't get we we don't get involved. Most in people, most expats come down here with cash anyway because they've sold their properties. They sold all their assets and states. So and when they contact us, it's because they already met met someone that already built with us. Okay. Because we don't advertise those. Okay. We all, we have our webpage. You're strictly word of mouth. Referrals. Referrals. Okay. That's how we work. Referrals. So when they come to us, they already know that how we build, and uh, what we can offer and what we request from mm -hmm. the client as well. Mm -hmm. So what does it cost to build a house here? It depends. It depends on finishes. It depends on location. It depends on design. It depends on many things. Mm -hmm. If it depends if you build with a with a proper building company or if you build with a maestro that mm -hmm. can give you a cheap quote mm -hmm. uh, around the corner, he's going to he's going to cut corners, yeah. right? So it depends. But I can say that it could go from the. 700 to 1,000, depending okay. on finish your location. That's that 700 to 1,000 square dollars per square meter? U.S. dollar per square US meter. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to get clear on that. Yeah. So, so I'm going to say, okay, Francisco, I want to build a house. You're going to arrange for the carpenters, the builders, the plumbers, the electricians. You're going to take care of all that, right? I don't have to hire anybody, right? When you contract me, in mm -hmm. the contract that we are going to provide you, we are going to give you a fixed price. Okay. Okay. So what you have in the contract is what you pay. A different story if you want to make some upgrades, you know, tiles, counters, yeah, sure. that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I want an elevator now because, okay, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But we work with a fixed contract. And in the code, we provide windows, countertops, closets, uh, kitchen cabinets, Tiles, installation, everything, mm -hmm. it's already taken care of. Mm -hmm. So we are going to call you at the moment that the house is ready and say, here are the keys. But mm -hmm. we are an open book with our clients because yeah. most of the clients are already here in, in, in Ecuador. Yeah. And they visit the site every time. Mm -hmm. So what we request from them, what we, we provide them is a vest, a hard hat, and we ask them not to wear sandals on yeah. site. Sure. But they can be there every day if they want and supervise the bill and be part of the bill because they are us they, they have time they mm -hmm. are retired and, and they enjoy building the house with us i remember when i looked at when i went on the tour of sue and phil's place and i think you're responsible for this maybe if you're not maybe it was another part of your team but they they when they were doing the shower in their master bedroom phil or sue asked about where are we supposed to put our, our shower bottles and all of our stuff? And was it you or was it the, somebody there that said, oh, we'll build a little recess in the wall, cut out. And it wasn't part of the original plan. No, it wasn't. And so you run across that, and, and they, they did a magnificent job. We, we, you know. we solved problems during construction. During the construction. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and we can manage requests. So 
Here's the thing, when we submit the approvals from the municipality, the, the blueprints are already approved by the municipality and they also the administration from the community, right? But you are allowed to do some changes okay. without telling them, hey, I'm doing this. And that's so, so easy to solve when you are with the proper team that mm -hmm. works in, 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 in your project. That it was like, the pro they, they wanted that change in the morning and the next morning it was already there. Yeah. Yeah, the tile was a different story. We have this, the, the, they installed the tile with mm -hmm. the, whole, the, the, the whole house, right. but it was already there. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember the smile of Sue at that time. Oh, thank you. you yeah. yeah. Okay, so expat comes here, they move here, they want to build a house and they want to get in touch with you. How are they going to find you? Right now, uh, as I, I told know it's you, I know it's word of mouth. Yeah, but but, but we have our web page. Okay, and they can visit our web page, and uh, that's that's how we work. We we don't we don't advertise ourselves. Now okay. you are going to help find yeah. with that because I'm you you already you are sure. doing this interview and they are going to find me because of you. Mm -hmm. But that and, we and we'll put your information in the description. Thank you very too. much. So yeah, okay, all right, well. Is there anything else you want to tell me? I think I'm out of questions. I'm, uh, what I want to tell you is that, and, and it's not only me, if you call any of our clients, they are going to tell you that we deliver what we promise. Okay. We don't cut corners. We give peace of mind okay. during the whole process. Our goal is not to have clients at the end of the world is to have friends. Yeah. And some of our clients become almost family to us. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. That's what is important for a company. In, in Byron, my partner, you are going to find always a smile. Mm -hmm. And he's always going to, see, to say, see, that's my problem. Mm -hmm. I have see. to solve his see. <laughs> but he's always going right. to say yes right. yeah. to our clients see. Yeah. with okay. a smile in his face. All right, well, good. Okay, I'm gonna put all the information about your company in the description. Uh, I'm gonna also do a podcast out of this video and I'll make sure that there's uh, information provided. Uh, I'll put a link to your website. Thank you Okay, very much. so that people Thank can you. write, you know, find you. Thank okay. you for the interview. Thank, Thank you. Hold on for a second. We're being interrupted here. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who is this lady? Where did she come from? <laughs> what? She's the boss. <laughs> She's a... <laughs> you do work with a budget. Yeah. Yeah, do you ask? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's a good point. Yeah. A budget. Yes, we, we work with a budget. Yeah. We ask the client, what is your budget and what is your, your dream house? And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to tell them, it's going to be a smaller dream house yeah. based on your budget. Or sometimes we're going to tell you, you have enough to do something else. Do you ever have to tell anybody that, I'm sorry, but that can't be covered in your budget? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. yes, but I, I, I gave them options. Sure. Right. Give them. Other yeah, we can. Yeah, we can go. try to do it this way. Yeah. And they say, "Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a good solution." They, it's because they have in their mind what they can do at the states or in Canada, but yeah. not what they can do here. Right. Based in codes and based in regulations and mm -hmm. approvals, but we gave them uh, options. Right. Right. And sometimes also I have to say no to some clients mm -hmm. because uh, we were uh, with work at that time. Or maybe the reality is because, you know, we work by referrals, we work by, we want to become friends with that person, and maybe we don't have that feeling. Right. And we have to say, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know how to pick your clients. Yeah. I think that's important, too. Okay, all right. Are we done now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. All right, cool. Thanks no, so much. No, all right. thank you very much. <laughs>